Now these nine Adani companies, the way I see, they are not like consultancy or software companies, right? They have fixed assets, tangible assets, ah, you, can assets. Touch on, you can touch with your hand. You tell us a bit a description on Mundra Port. I believe it's like, uh, I've never been there, so I've been there. <laughs> I've been it's like an engineering model, right? Yes. It's see, a complete city. It's a technology like 21st century. I, I got into the Adani story almost 18 years ago. 2006, I was working as a consulting editor with the German publishing group called DVD Media, which specializes in logistics. They had an Indian chapter called Logger.in, short form for Logistics India. And I was a consulting editor for this Indian chapter. All of a sudden, I get a message from Germany. Baska, I think you should go to Mundra. There's something happening there. I didn't know Mundra. Yeah, nobody knew. <laughs> I had to pick up an address to whatever Mundra was. When I found that, I had to find a connection could take me to Mundra. And then I found a friend of a friend of and got a connection. I went to Mundra uninvited and the friend showed me around and I was dumbstruck. In the afternoon, the CEO of Mundra port, Umesh Abhyankar, met me and he explained to me why this port would change India. This was the first all-weather deep water port ever, ever. The eastern coast has deep water ports, but they're not all weather. Three months then, Bebea Bengal does not allow ships to, be, to, to go through. It's too dangerous. On the western coast, there were no deep water ports. And GNPT, which is the largest port, had a draft or depth of just 12 meters. Nazgul Dock, where ships are made, has a draft of 4 meters. And Mundra, and Mundra started in 18, went to 22 meters. The largest ships could come to India. Earlier, all ships would go to Dubai, to Jamalili port, and the consignment would put on smaller boats, and the smaller boats would come to India, increasing, increasing logistics costs. And Adani built this port, and that was the time I was so impressed, I wrote a cover story for the magazine, saying the man who could change India. And the Germans were impressed with it, they asked me to come, and speak, uh, to, come to Dubai and Abu Dhabi and give a public lecture on what would happen on the port scene. I gave the talk. People believe me, people disbelieve me, or people like this. But after that, that kind of engineering uh, had never happened before in Indian history. Never. Right? And not only that, he wanted a dredger, dredging corporation of India, which is the government owned company, which dealt with dredgers in India, said you have to wait six months till you have no dredgers available. Huh. He said, I can't wait six months. Time is money. Time is money. Yeah. So he immediately told his managers, let's buy a dredger. He said, it costs over a million, okay, five million dollars. He said, buy. He said, but it's expensive. He said, more expensive to wait. So he bought a dredger. And the manager said, what will you do after the work is done? He said, we'll find out. For right now, right now, let's finish this one. When the work was done, because he had a dredger, he started looking for another pot and he got the hedge. So the dredger made him look for another pot and he made the hedge also in record time in Mundra. So that then was like another port. backward integration. And then he went to the third port, then a fourth port. Today he has 60 dredgers unheard of in the world history. In, in, ports, in the ports business. And when he was, a, when he was an exporter importer, ah, I was about to say. He discovered that the most profitable ports were those which had land. Because then you could store goods before they went on ships, or you could store goods after they were unloaded from ships. And you got rental income, which is called demarrage. Demarrage, yeah. Okay. That the biggest money ports make is to demarrage. So, and then you also built the railway line so that the stuff doesn't lie in the port, yes, right? But first thing, as soon as Mundra, that concept came up, he got government permission to buy land, which is brackish water, underwater, at unusable at, land. At practically zero value. Mm -hmm. One rupee, two rupees, five rupees, at different times. Bought that land. In the prospectus that came out in 2007 for Mundra, he had 35,000 acres of land around Mundra, unheard of in India. Oh, no, that will make him a bad guy for the socialists. Of course, they now say he bought the land cheap. The land no, he bought the land cheap. Yes, yes. Also, yes nobody wanted the land. He could have really land. sold it, right? And after buying the land, he got a railway line put up, he got a road put up, the second railway line comes up, price multiplied. So it had a port, it had an airport, it had a railway, it had a roadways. Naturally, the price of land would go up. 